Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today the Church celebrates the 18th Sunday of the year, but it's also the 31st of July, which is the solemnity of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus. And so being a Jesuit feast, we'll use the prayers of the solemnity of St. Ignatius, but we will use the readings of the 18th Sunday. We come before the Lord, and like Ignatius, all of us are called to the service of God through the living out of our faith in concrete ways. For the times perhaps we notice we have failed to do that in the days that have gone by, let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And and on on earth, earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy mercy on us. For you you alone are the Holy One. You You alone are the Lord. You You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, Grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Sometimes a man who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by a man who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and strain with which he toils beneath the sun for all his days are full of pain, and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his mind does not rest. This also is vanity. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. O Lord, o Lord you, you have, have been, been our, our refuge, refuge from, from generation, generation to generation. To generation. You turn man back to dust and say, Return, O children of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, or like a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. You sweep them away like a dream, like grass which is fresh in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and is fresh. 
by evening it withers and fades. O Lord, Lord, you have been been our refuge refuge from generation generation to generation. Then teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long? Show pity to your servants. O Lord, Lord, you have been been our our refuge refuge from generation generation to generation. generation. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O oh, give success to the work of our hands. O oh, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new man, who has been renewed in knowledge after the image of his creator. Here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, one of the multitude said to Jesus, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said to them, Take heed and be aware of all covetousness, for a person's life does not consist in the abundance of their possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do now? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for themselves and is not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In his autobiography, St. Ignatius talks about himself as the pilgrim. A pilgrim is first a person who is on a journey, a person who is seeking something. Ignatius was a pilgrim in the fullest sense of the word, on a journey with himself, on a journey with God, and eventually on a journey with others. Pilgrims often need a guide, someone to help them find their way. Often, in strange lands and places where they are out of their context, 
and maybe even out of their comfort zone. Ignatius tells us that it was God who became his guide. God treated him, he says in his autobiography, with the same patience and tenderness that a school teacher has with a pupil. In the case of Ignatius, God had to repeatedly, it seems, smash Ignatius's fixed ideas and projects. And smashing is a very apt term when talking about Ignatius. God smashed the great plans that he had to become a soldier and to do incredible deeds to honor the lady of his dreams. As we know, he goes to war against the French and a cannonball literally smashes his leg and brings this stubborn soldier who wouldn't surrender down to some sort of reality. The next fixed idea that Ignatius has was when he was in this long convalescence as he healed from this wound in Loyola. But God again smashed his idea of going back to the life of a courtier and courting the lady of his dreams. God had allies in his task because his pious relatives at the castle in Loyola would not provide Ignatius with novels, his favorite reading material, but rather gave him books about Jesus and the lives of the saints. And still full of himself, Ignatius' dream starts to fade as the great soldier when he reads about the saints and he compares the life of the soldier that he wants to live. And so Ignatius, noticing the quality difference in his dreams, starts to say to himself, if St. Francis did this, I can also do it. And you know what? Even better than St. Francis. If St. Dominic did this, I can do it. And maybe better than St. Dominic. Reading of the terrible penances the saints did for their sins, Ignatius even then thought he could do better or worse as the case may be. And so Ignatius continues his journey in life as a pilgrim. His great dream of living in Jerusalem, in the land of Jesus, doing what the Lord has done, was also shattered by the authorities in the Holy Land. On the return trip, Ignatius says that he begins to think about what he has to do next, because he went to the Holy Land to try and live as Jesus did, and got thrown out. He goes back to this little village called Manresa, and he begins helping others on their spiritual journey. And then he becomes a student and prepares himself for the priesthood. Later on, long deliberations take place, sometimes painful deliberations, to form the Society of Jesus. But one thing we see in the life of Ignatius is that throughout his pilgrimage, Ignatius became more and more passionately attached to the person of Jesus. He desired nothing more than to be a disciple of Jesus, to follow, as he says, the poor and the humble Jesus. The invitation for us in today's gospel, perhaps, is for us to consider who or what we rely on, what we are dependent on, material things perhaps, or maybe even sometimes some sort of world view that we hold dear, that we use as a crutch to get through life. Ignatius learned how to let go of all he relied on and trust in the goodness of God. Ignatius' poverty is not measured by what he does not have, but rather by what he does not need. 
in the gospel today, we are challenged not by what we do have, but what we do not need. That man did not need those bigger bonds. And so if we are honest, many of us have far more than what we do need. And I guess as uncomfortable and as challenging as that may be, we need to be honest and transparent with ourselves, with God, and one another. And someone like Ignatius teaches us that it is possible for us to do that. In our first reading, too, we hear about the things that are supposed to satisfy human beings, and they don't. Ignatius teaches us that what we need is passion to be good pilgrims. It is our passion that helps us to embrace the pilgrimage of life. And a pilgrim is always on the move and not attached to what they cannot take with them. Because ultimately, that's what counts. What is it that I can take with me that will help me to live life to the full? And so I guess for all of us, not just for the Society of Jesus, the important question for us now at this time is, what kind of pilgrim am I? How am I living my pilgrimage of life as a follower of Jesus? And perhaps even we may want to ask ourselves, at this time in my life, at this moment in my life, what might help me to be a better pilgrim. Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we make our pilgrim journey of life, let's now bring our prayers before the Lord that we may live that journey as deeply and as well as we can. For all of us on the pilgrimage of discipleship, that we would not judge success in life by the standards of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our political leaders, that they may strive to see that the wealth of our country is justly and fairly distributed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who do have resources, that they would be willing to share with those who do not have, and in so doing be rich in the sight of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For us who pray together today, that we may have the wisdom to know what is truly important in life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the society of Jesus in the world, that the Lord would bless the mission of the society, the Jesuits, and all those who collaborate with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our own needs at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks for the example of people like St. Ignatius, 
And we pray that through these prayers, you would help us to respond to you as he did in our own time and place, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us into the sacrifice of our faith, humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us of all our sins. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the font of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the discipline of St. Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts, and you move us to conform our life to Christ, that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue. Through him, O Father of mercy, we are preordained by you that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, and be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore now and for ages unending with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius Loyola, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, let's pray together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace, and if you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. 
Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of Saint Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.